All right, aviation efficacy on Natos. So, you've had a date or two with those altimeter videos, huh? Brace yourselves, quiz time. Welcome to the world of FAA written test questions, because hey, who knows aviation better than the FAA, right? So, here's your warm up, an easy peasy one, or so they say. Which of the following defines the type of altitude used when maintaining flight level 210? Any guesses? Worry not, you'd be surprised at how many folks stumble on this. And the answer is A, pressure altitude. Enough fun! Let's work on this one. Under which condition will pressure altitude be equal to true altitude? This occurs only in a perfect world when standard atmosphere conditions exist. The winner here is A. But in case you can't shake off C, think of it this way. For them to be equal, they must start at the same level, which happens when the mean sea level pressure is 29.92 inches of mercury. So C seems to make sense here. But hold on, there's more to this story. They also got a groove on the same scale. That's where the standard lapse rate comes into play. But C didn't bring that up at all. Same thing here. Remember the definition of density altitude. It is the pressure altitude adjusted for non-standard temperature. So, don't overthink it. All it takes for them to match is the temperature to be standard. You fly from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure without adjusting your altimeter. Your altimeter will read A. The actual altitude above sea level B. Lower than the actual altitude above sea level C. Higher than the actual altitude above sea level This question isn't as straightforward as previous ones. Before taking the plunge, let's break it down and reword it if necessary. The main scoop here is spotting which altitude, indicated or actual, is higher. First off, wave goodbye to blatantly irrelevant options like A. I'm guessing you are an airplane pilot, not a submarine pilot. Of course, the actual altitude is above sea level. Now, remember, when sea level pressure is lower than standard, the baseline dips down causing the indicated altitude to read higher than the actual altitude. If you're puzzled, rewind to the first video for a refresher. Alternatively, take a shortcut. Switch up that old saying, from high to low, watch out below, into, from high to low, actual goes low. Flying from a high pressure area to a low pressure one means your actual altitude is lower than what's indicated. Okay, which condition would cause the altimeter to indicate a lower altitude than actually flown? This time, we want the indicated altitude to be lower than actual altitude. Right off the bat, B gets the boot because we just witnessed that lower than standard pressure led to a higher indicated altitude. Now, let's compare the indicated altitude to true altitude as air temperature changes. In standard conditions, indicated altitude equals true altitude. When air chills, density shoots up, but your altimeter, oblivious to density, sticks to 1,000 feet giving you less than 1,000 feet of true altitude. On the flip side, warmer air means lower density, yet your trusty Mr. Altimeter insists on that 1,000 feet, landing you at a true altitude of 1,400 feet. And voila, C is the answer. Under what condition will true altitude be lower than indicated with an altimeter setting of 29.92 inches of mercury? The tail end of this question may lure some of you into a wild goose chase trying to figure out the type of altitude indicated. But truth be told, that detail doesn't matter. The altimeter behaves the same no matter what type of altitude it's indicating. 
We're still playing the game of indicated altitude versus true altitude. But this time, we're cheering for true altitude to be the underdog. It's like flipping the script from the last round. And yet, you guessed it, the answer lands on C. To help chog your memory, let's spin that saying, from warm to cold, actual goes low. When air temperature is colder than standard, true altitude is lower. Time for some math. When an altimeter is changed from 30.11 inches of mercury to 29.96 inches of mercury, in which direction will the indicated altitude change? And by what value? Don't break a sweat just yet. First, let's determine the direction of change. Compare the two settings. If the new setting has a larger number than the initial one, the indicated altitude will rise. Otherwise, it drops. That is, they move in the same direction. Since 29.96 is smaller than 30.11, the new reading is lower. The calculation is a piece of cake if you keep the standard lapse rate in mind. Subtract the initial setting from the new one, then multiply by 1000. The result is 150. That negative sign is reminder that the new reading is lower. If you keep them in right sequence, it's just a twist of the standard lapse rate. And here comes B, taking the spotlight. The altimeter will read 150 feet lower. Great to see you hanging in there for the last question. You must really have a soft spot for altimeters. Anyway, this one's meant to be a breeze. The only way to mess it up is by overthinking. Just keep it simple. The altimeter setting reported in METAR is for true altitude. When you are on the ground, it gives you the field elevation. In case it slipped your mind, take a peek at the last part of the second video in our altimeter series for a refresher. Thanks for watching. If you like our videos, please subscribe. Any topic you want us to talk about, just leave it in the comments. See you soon.